Richard, and I'm a second year student here. And welcome you all coming to CityU. And how many of you is from I are from CityU? Whoa! <laughs> Get that job that I, I'm waiting for this afternoon, you know, for a job um, interview. In my opinion, <laughs> um, in my opinion, the color tone is kind of too casual. Very good, Carl. Congratulations. You know, I tell you what, you know, never wear light colors for job interviews. When you get fired, before you're hired. Always wear dark colors, like this gentleman. Kyle, is it Kyle? Yeah, Kyle. Okay, Kyle, Well, this is a perfect, well, not, not that, you know, you're not. But a dark suit, well, jeans, though. A dark suit with a crisp white shirt, okay? And a dark tie with a little very, very, very professional okay. there, right? Do we have a guy here? I think you know uh, uh, Stephen. Where's Stephen? Yeah. Stephen, can you come up here, Stephen? Sure. You wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay? You go for a job interview like this, you know? You get the job. <laughs> I'm Jessica from Financial Services in Hollywood, and I really have a very personal, special story about that circle. Like, uh, I still remember the time when I was a freshman, and the freshman summer, the freshman summer after the final examination. Right, right. And it was my first time to meet Phil, and I talked How to How long? That was two years ago? I think three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah, two or a few months. You two, a few months. Two. Change, yeah, and and that one was a it, it was the ending, the closing of the that season's small talk circle, and the the first time I do something, I, I got to know of something concept not working, and it really changed a, a lot of me. I started thinking about, started to have some reflection on everything I have encountered at that closing, okay. of how people communicate and how the sparks can can bring out when you are communicating with people and start to get to know the idea of soft skill. And I meet a lot of people, I know Will, Will, yeah, and I see people change, and I see how I change, and you see how I change, you witness my growth. Yes, absolutely. And then now I'm final year, and I think if I don't meet Philip now, I don't, I, I'm very busy currently, but I still want to meet all buddies, and I, I really want to meet, meet you guys, and yeah, I brought new friends here, and I hope Small Talk Circle can go on. Maybe next year I will not be in Hong Kong, but I have I kept the special sense of the line to Small Talk Circle. Well, you can go online and then check us out. Uh, well, thank you, Jessica. Let us give Jessica a quick hand. Uh, the value propositions of STC. The first one is what? Passion, right? Now, why do we need passion? And I'm going to ask Kevin, you know, do we have a passion in life? I bet he does. You know, I want him to explain, you know, what his passion is all about. Very important. Um, in fact, it's probably the beginning of everything, right? Um, I subscribe to the theory that everyone is gifted with at least one thing that is so uniquely available to you that if you use it right, you're going to do something big with it and impact the world. Okay. So let me ask you three questions. Define your passion. What is it that you just can't wait to get up and do in the morning, every day? That's the first question. Second question, what is it that you just can't stop talking about? The third question is, what is it that when you do or talk about, time just disappears, hours of fly past, and you just don't even notice? If you do feel something, don't just keep it on your mind, okay? So, a simple mathematical concept. If you have something in here, and it's not outside your body, the best concepts remain just that, buried. It's never been exposed, no one knows about it. So as far as the world's concerned, that's zero. 
and multiply anything with zero, what do you get? You get zero, right? Nobody knows. Nothing is. You are meant to be living for each other. At the core level, you yearn for a community of being able to communicate with each other, serve each other, make each other's lives better. So let's say there's a yearly tribunal, and there are five guys sitting on top of that, and everybody got called in once a year to justify why I should renew your life for another year. I've been born in this round. And this is one of my favorite analogy. Do you know the toughest challenge in your life is already over? So I was looking at this YouTube uh, documentary about conception, how we all come to be. So you, out of 500 million other sperm competing for this one place in your mother's egg, and you, out of 500 million other potential contestants, one. I don't think that happened by luck. So what I've got today is uh, a list of what I think are, to me, really cool and meaningful advertising slogans. Now we're splitting groups today. There are four groups. I want each group to take two. Okay, two, to discuss among yourself what you thought of the group slogan, the message was, and after your discussion, whether it changed anything, your thought process, your mentality. Okay. Maybe many of you have the experience of playing of clay, of drawing, of, uh, of building things out of Lego. And uh, sometimes if we don't follow the rule box, we come up with something entirely different. We should be able to break free from our comfort zone so that we can so that we can do things that others have not imagined ourselves to do. Um, when Henry Ford invented a car, people didn't like it. They, they wanted something else. Henry Ford said that if I if he asked people what they wanted, they would say faster horses. Now we have cars. Yes. This is the kind of spirit we are looking for. Yes. The, the company says think different, Apple says think different. Okay, yes, we agree with that. But then at the same time, if you look carefully, like every other student here has back product, okay? Everyone, uh, everyone else, every other student has an iPhone, Mac, and stuff, which is not really different. How do you think different when you have the same thing over and over again? So they, I, I can understand that the company is trying to be unique. They're trying to be. They trying to tell that oh, we should should think different. But at the same time, they should look at how the market is. Uh, the market right now is like it's. To be honest, they're producing very similar products. They are like thinking differently in terms of like they're putting emphasis on quality. Uh, that's like no doubt there. But at the same time, they have to stand out. They have to like do something else. Oh, I think the most the great uh, the greatest tragedy is being indifferent is about us, about our, about me. Because I give in, uh, indifference to my life, to the world. So I I have no purpose. Just like Kevin said. Well, I'm a finance student, and my professor has asked me to construct a portfolio to outbid the Hansen Index out of its constituents, 50 stocks. However, in my team, five of us has do not have any investment experience before. We know not the market. We know not every company's performance. We know not how it will grow. Maybe the return of it, maybe one month or two months ago. At that time, we can only panic. One of my teammates told me, well, we do not we have uncertainty about the future. We do not know the performance of the stock. However, what we can do is to focus our efforts to put our research on today, to acquire the information, and to, end, to put our effort together to, to have the great best outcome. At least at our side with our knowledge to, to utilize everything we got to achieve the most, at least today.